throughout many spiritual philosophies and theologies across the world, especially the ancient ones, we see this concept that the more we look outside of ourselves for answers, the less we will know. But on the other hand, the more we look inside of ourselves for answers, the more we will know. We see this in the original teachings of Yahshua, as well as the Hindu teachings, as well as Buddhism. And we also see this in what was probably the original teachings of these philosophies, the Emerald Tablets, written by the Atlantean priest king Thoth. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers on this channel. Without you guys, we absolutely would not be able to do what we do. So I thank you guys all from the bottom of my heart. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today in our continual deep dive of the Emerald Tablets, we're going to be talking about the collapse of Atlantis and the first Emerald Tablet. Mary Magdalene once wrote, There are many gods and goddesses with great power, and all manner of spirits that have secret knowledge. Yet the power that is in you is greater, and the knowledge you possess is more rare and precious. I tell you, great and luminous beings shall come seeking power and knowledge from you. See that you give to all who ask and withhold only from those who come to steal. And those who receive, let worship the anointed of God Most High. In fact, throughout the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, not to mention the missing text, which is where that came from, we see references to other worldly beings. In the Old Testament, we see the Watchers. And if we look at the story of Atlantis, we see the beginning of our civilization as we know it today. And this is because of the Anunnaki, because the people of Atlantis were the first people of mixed origins, meaning that the Anunnaki had come to this planet because their planet was dying. They came here and they interbred with the Earthlings. These Anunnaki had a greater, more powerful civilization than any of the Earthlings had ever known before. Thus, for the Earthlings, these Anunnaki became like gods. We see the mention of Anunnaki in Sumerian text, as well as referenced through the Greek and Roman deities. We also see not only a reference of the Anunnaki mating with humans in the Old Testament of the Bible, but we also see this again through things like Greek mythology and Roman mythology when we have concepts of demigods, people who were born of both Anunnaki and Earthling. Now, these Anunnaki were obviously not gods, but because of their advanced civilization, that's the only way the Earthlings knew how to describe them. Now, I think a lot of people have huge misunderstanding about the Anunnaki. When I first started studying the Anunnaki, I had a misunderstanding about them. I thought that they were all bad. But the more and more I go deeper into the study of the Lost Gospels, and especially reflecting back on my own study into spirituality, and especially my time in India, it's very apparent to me that one person, regardless of where they're born or what they're born to, cannot be labeled as either good or bad just because of their physical matter. A person can only be labeled as good and bad because of the choices that person makes on a moral scale. And this is the exact same with the Anunnaki. There were some Anunnaki that came to this planet during the time of Atlantis and wanted to manipulate and use humans in order to harvest minerals or whatever they needed to bring back to their own planet to salvage it. They saw human beings in our ignorant form as easy pawns, easy slaves. However, there were other Anunnaki leaders that loved the Earthlings, did not want to see them hurt by the Anunnaki and took into protecting 
the Earthlings. Now, because of this mixing of cosmic origins, today on this planet, we as human beings, even as Mary Magdalene said all those years ago, we are the most luminous. We are the most knowledgeable at this point because we carry within our physical DNA strands from all over the cosmos. We know, or at least I know now, that this idea of race Black people, white people, Asian people, Latin people. According to the Egyptian hylographs, there were even blue people. And again, I ask, why aren't we focused on where these blue people went? They've just disappeared. Where are the blue people? But anyway, I digress. All these races that we have are not necessarily indicators of where our ancestors lived through survival of the fittest. For example, a black person isn't black necessarily because their ancestors survived in Africa. I'm not necessarily blonde hair, blue eyed because my ancestors are from Northern Europe. This is what the controllers want us to believe, but this is not really what this is. Our physical makeup is a sign of the dominant gene that comes from the cosmos. For example, we know that Magdalene herself looked a lot like me, was blondish, reddish hair, blue eyes. Why is that? Even though she was Egyptian, this was because her mother's line was Kentuckian. Who were the Kentuckians? They were from the planet Kenteka, and they were what we call Nordic. We also know that the real Yahshua was mixed between white and black, having darker, darker skin. But in their time, they didn't see this as race. They just saw this as a sign of their galactic heritage. This is why when we look at Atlantis and we look at the fall of Atlantis, we see the leftover Atlanteans coming into the land that we call Egypt. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Maybe my soul kind of knew this. I think most of us on this journey, even though the law of one speaks about this in the Cassiopeians, we're back here karmically because we were there for the fall of Atlantis. And I think that's why this subject is so fascinating to me. And I've been so intrigued by it for a lot of my adult life. When I was a child and I would study Egypt, I never saw Egypt as really being a part of the African continent. Now, yes, it is on the African continent. Absolutely. But it was like in my mind, mind's eye, I saw Africa, the Middle East, Europe above it, all is in like this brown color. And then Egypt was like in this yellow color. That's how I saw it in my mind. And I think what my soul was trying to remember or trying to prompt me to remember is that Egypt itself, the culture of Egypt were the leftover Atlanteans. And so what does that mean? Again, if we look at the Egyptian hieroglyphics, we see people of all races. We see people of all body shapes and sizes. It is because the Egyptian heritage was not conducive to just one race. It's all of us. It's all of our races. That's why we see pharaohs with blue eyes. That's why we see a blonde haired Magdalene who was born there in Egypt. It was just the rebuilding of the Atlantean structure. Now, because the Anunnaki were more advanced than the Earthlings and their understanding of technology and spirituality, which kind of go hand in hand with quantum physics, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I digress. They set up, the good Anunnaki set up Earth as the perfect, in Atlantis, as the perfect blueprint for human awakening. The spirituality that they taught very much aligns with what we're going to see in the Emerald Tablets, as well as what we see in really old text coming from India. The awareness of who we are as people is what is going to break us out of our bondage. Understanding that the spark that lies in me is the same spark that lies in you, which is the same spark that lies in the Anunnaki, in the the Lyrans, in the Palladians, X, Y, and Z. Now, I just stumbled upon a man called Matthias De Stefano, and he is someone who, from what I read and what I watched on him, claims to have memories of Atlantis. And when I first started listening to some of his conversations and some of his interviews, I was a little bit skeptical because it's on Gaia TV, and we know that we have to be careful with Gaia TV sometimes. Like, they do put the truth out, but I don't know if they're putting the full truth out, if you know what I mean. But anyway. 
he started talking about remembering being with these Anunnaki and how he knew at the point of, of his life in Atlantis that he himself in that life was a DNA mixture of all these different celestial life forms. He talked about the struggle between the good Anunnaki and the bad Anunnaki. And we know, we know that Lumeria, the timeline of Lumeria was before there was confusion, before there was conflict. But with Atlantis, we had conflict coming to this earth, which means that we were brought into a polarized planet, a third density polarized planet. So in a lot of ways, the Anunnaki coming in, some being good, some being bad, gave us that friction, that template that we needed to start to find our own awakening. Matthias de Stefano claims that within the Atlantean, the good side of the Atlantean um, Anunnaki tribes, for lack of a better word, there were 12 distinctive groups. And these 12 distinctive groups were kind of cornered off from each other in order for them to perfect what they could genetically do. They had leaders of each of these 12 groups, an Anunnaki leader that wasn't like a tyrant as we think of today, but actually really cared about the people, these offspring of these Anunnaki's with the Earthlings. And so each of these 12 groups would learn how to be and use the talents that they were born with depending on their galactic heritage. Now, this struck me as interesting because, again, this is the first time I've ever listened to this man speak about this. And if you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I have talked about many, 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 many times about the 12 tribes of Israel and that Jacob from the Bible is not the good tribes of Israel. We know that the darkness can't create anything. It can only steal from and advert from the light. And so the bloodlines of the families that are in the controller's cult, the dark cult, are descendants of Jacob. So what is the good? What are the real 12 tribes of Israel? Well, that's the galactic tribes, which matches what Matteo de Stefano was saying, or excuse me, Matthias de Stefano was saying. He also claimed that the earth itself has 12 different portals that hold information about each galactic group, which if we know when we talked last week in the introduction to the Halls of Amente, it's almost like that is a portal into this information. So I thought that was super, super, super fascinating. We also know that within our own DNA, we only have two DNA strands that are active when we're supposed to have 12 active strands of DNA. So could the 10 that are not active be the missing tribes of Israel? Is it literally something inside of us and not something outside of us? Seems like it to me. The destruction of Atlantis came when the war between the good Anunnaki and the bad Anunnaki got so intense. And we know that in polarization, the bad guys started to take over. We know from our own world today that it is so much easier to trick somebody into slavery than it is to push someone on a limb and tell them to do it themselves. So many people would rather have someone else just do something for them, bringing, their, bringing themselves to their own slaughter than being out on their own and trying to figure things out on their own, especially in spirituality. And so what happened at the fall of Atlantis was what the, the bad guys took most of the power, holding all the secret knowledge to themselves. And we had these other 12 tribes that were so much less that the bad guys were able to then topple the good guys. This is what brought about the flood, the great flood that we see in the Bible that wiped out Atlantis, bringing most of Atlantis under the ocean. And as I said in the beginning, Atlantis was the origins of who we are today. It's what began us, us humans that are watching right now. We are the descendants of those who were left over. And no, it wasn't just Noah. There were groups of people that survived, that went to high ground or went into the caverns and survived the flood and came out. And those are our descendants. We are the Atlanteans. We literally are the Atlanteans. And how, now we're back again in this cosmic battle of good versus evil. Only this time, we hope we win. Now, a lot of people are familiar with Atlantis from Plato's work, Timaeus and Acritidas. I know I studied this in school and I actually went back and started to read Plato's work. And it was interesting because we're taught that this is like, it's a fake, it, it's an imaginary world, a utopia that Plato created in his mind, nothing but a fictitious empire that never really existed. 
But the more I read into Plato's work, I realized Plato's work, in my opinion, is not fictitious because it matches what Matthias de Stefano is stay, saying in his memories, and it also matches the Emerald Tablets, and it also matches everything else we know about Atlantis. Now, if you've been living under a rock and you don't know who Plato is, Plato was a Greek philosopher who was born in 427 BC and died in 347 BC. So in our human timeline, the timeline that we've been taught, Plato lived even before the birth of Yahshua. But again, Plato was very firm that Atlantis was in a utopian world that we as humans evolved from. Now, what I thought was super fascinating, because if you are studying Tartaria, you are familiar with the mud floods. And in Plato's work, he doesn't just talk about a flood of water. He also talks about a flood of mud. Now, of course, the translation that we're using for the M roll tablets is from a man named Michael Doriel. This is also the same translation that I believe Billy Carson used. And Billy Carson, I am just obsessed with him at this moment. Um, his talks on the Emerald Tablets are unbelievable. And I'm going to place a link to his channel down in the description box below. I know that there are some things that Billy and Carson and I don't agree on, but that's okay because most of the stuff he talks about we do agree on. And I really would like to hopefully one day get him on the channel. I really want to ask him about Tartaria and see if any of the Tartarian research changes his perspective on some things. But with that being said, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is coming from Billy Carson's research, as well as Michael Doriel's research into the Emerald Tablets. And the reason why their research resonated with me so much in my own critical thinking skills is because both of them are coming at this from a very spiritual perspective. And that is what this book is. Yes, in the first tablet, we're going to hear about the falling of Atlantis, the story of the falling of Atlantis, but there's more to it. There's more within the writing. And I've actually read the first tablet now about 10 times. And every time I read it, I notice something else. There's something else that stands out to me. Now, Doriel claims that the tablets are a frequency of light and the light in you will cause the tablets to respond. Basically, the more you read these tablets, that light in you, will activate the light of the tablets where you then start to quantum entangle with these tablets. And the mastery of these tablets will allow you to, in a sense, time travel and consciousness. It will allow you to move away from the concepts of death, leaving at will from the earth. All of these things that at one point I think we thought were kind of hokey, but now we're realizing are legit. After all, Thoth himself had conquered death. Now, Tablet 1 is titled The History of Thoth the Atlantean, and we are going to go through it, and I am going to break it down, but at the end, I am going to play just a solid reading of it if it's something you want to listen to over and over again yourself, although I would suggest purchasing the Emerald Tablets for yourself as well. So we start with the first tablet of Thoth saying, I Thoth the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king, magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amente, set down for guidance for those who are to come after. Now, I underlined come after here on my book because those that are to come after, that's us. We spoke about this last week. Thoth the Atlantean priest king, king wrote these tablets for us. And after he wrote the tablets, he hid them away until our generation was ready to receive the knowledge. These records of the mighty wisdom of the great Atlantis. And so Doriel goes on to say the passing of Thoth into the halls of Amente was not the change we call death. He merely placed his physical body beneath the wraith of force, later referred to as the flower of life, where it would be preserved indefinitely. As Thoth, he would not return. But while his body rested in suspended animation, his consciousness entered many bodies and had many lives. Okay, and somebody mentioned that on Aquarius Rising Africa last week when we were just introducing this topic. 
we think about these med beds that are to come. So is it a stretch to say that the med beds are coming from the information in these tablets? And we know that in the halls of Amente, underneath the earth where all this is hidden, there's not only just information, but there's actual preserved technology that the Atlanteans, our ancestors used. We know the Atlantean world was way more advanced than we are even today. So again, in the beginning, we see Thoth telling us that he is about to leave again. He's about to return into the halls of Amente. That is why he's writing these tablets down because it's time for him to depart so that we, the descendants of Atlantis, can take go about our process of reincarnation. In fact, he talks heavily about reincarnation in these tablets. He goes on to say, in the great city of Keor on the island of Nundal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation, not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amente, where the river of life flows eternally forward. Now, Kior, according to Michael Doriel, in his translation and in his studies, was apparently the city of the priesthood of Atlantis. And this lived, this was on an island called Unal. And on the opposite island was Undal, so Unal and Undal. And Unal and Kior on Undal faced Unal. And the other side was occupied by the Chen, which was the philosophical and scientific groups. So this goes back to Matthias de Stefanano's memory of there being these 12 different groups that were kind of isolated together, honing in and working on their abilities. So we have this in the emerald tablets that yes this was what was going on on the good side of atlantis these different groups were working on their abilities thoth goes on to tell us a hundred times ten have i descended the dark way that led into the light as many times have i have ascended from the darkness into the light my strength and power renewed so he's telling us that he has reincarnated like he's gone into the chambers to renew himself and we even have here where doriel tells us that that thoth was approximately fifty thousand years old when he wrote these tablets and at the fall of atlantis he was about twenty thousand years old and so every 50 years or so he would go into the halls of amente to regenerate his body to continue to live and at this time he is making the decision to now leave now this is where it gets really interesting because in the next verse he says now for a time i descend then the men of kim shall know me no more now we know kim kim k-h-e-m is the original word of egypt Okay, so this is where we get alchemy, chemistry, all that stuff. We talked about this last week. So now for a time I descend and the men of Kim shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn, so in a time to come, I will rise again mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. All right. So this is this is where we get into the guards of the halls of Amente. Then beware, O men of Kim, if ye falsely betray my teachings, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from which ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north or the men of the south, lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely it will return. It, for surely I will return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will return, rewarding or punishing as ye have request, requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me, not knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity, knowledge that belonged to the earth's war. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. And of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, Thotme. We're going to talk about Thotme, his father. Keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light, who dwelt within the temple, and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands. Mouthpiece after thee of the dweller of Unal, speaking to the king's with the voice that must be obeyed. Okay, so let's go back again. We know from last week's studies that Thoth left these tablets in the halls of Amente under the Great Pyramid. 
And we know that he ordained certain priests to stand guard at the halls of Amente through all these generations, protecting the information from those who wish to destroy us. These became known as the pyramid priests. Now he's giving the pyramid priest a warning. He's saying, hey, listen, I'm going to trust you to hold this information for my children, for my descendants, and not give it away to those who will betray the teaching. So basically, do not give this, this information to the cabal, to the deep state, right? Hold them tight, keep them protected. Now, if we look at Thoth's father, Thotme, many people believe that Thoth's father, Thotme, was Zeus himself. Well, who is Zeus? Zeus is a Greek god, an Anunnaki. This is what I was saying in the beginning. We think all these stories of the Greek gods as mythological or demonic, but they're not. They're literally aliens who came down and mated with us humans. So therefore we carry the DNA of them as well. This is again what Mary Magdalene was saying in her gospel too. This is the truth of it. And Thought May was one of these, if he was Zeus, he was one pure Anunnaki God. And so Thoth himself is now a demigod he's he's one of us i mean I, I hope that makes sense like we're carrying the dna and so thoth is us and we are thoth we are his descendants and he's saying my father was one of these rulers he was one of these leaders and as many people believe thought may was actually zeus so yes he was the king of the sky and so with thought may Thoth learned everything. He learned everything about the cosmos, about spirituality. He was given a huge responsibility from his father because, again, his father was the keeper of the great temple, a link, a link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the race of men who inhabited the ten islands. He's the link. He's Zeus. He understands the spiritual, the cosmic origins, the, the race of aliens who want to teach us who we are as human but he's also in touch with us on this planet does this make sense like mind-blowing right thoth also warns that there are going to be invaders from outer space that attack the earth the th the secrets which he left were a great ship of war beneath the sphinx and the secrets of pyramids this is what doriel is saying and, if, and i read that and my i got chill bumps because i was like holy shit because we know it's not just the bad onanaki it's the fucking draco too you know not that all draco are bad i know i know that there are some draco that are good again every living being has a choice to make has free will but he was saying listen listen priests of the pyramids who are going to be given the responsibility to protect this information there are going to be space attacks some of these other galactic beings that are not here for the highest good who are polarized negative are going to come to this earth and they're going to want this information and it is your job not to betray me or betray any of my descendants the sons and daughters of atlantis because at some point many years from now these people are going to need these tablets to understand the next jump, the next quantum leap for humanity. And here we are. So I have to say, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far, the um, chiefs of the Great Pyramids did a really good job protecting this information. Because at this point, as we said last week, the tablets are being made available to us now. And we know that that's who Thoth wrote these for. Thoth wrote these tablets for you. For you to read and for you to understand and now they're being released this is these tablets are your birthright these are your birthright right this is what's going to start to help you work through your frequency work through your vibrational frequency on top of doing all the shadow work we see this metaphorically and figuratively figuratively and literally in all these old stories of going into the underworld and coming back up again going into the underworld coming back up again even the halls of amenti are placed under the earth's core what does this mean going into your own underworld coming back up again so doing your own work exercising doing your your meditation reading the spiritual text over and over and over again until you start to shake loose these memories you start to activate these other 10 dna strands that are a part of you as well you are not an earthling yes you were born on this earth yes your ancestors in the were born on this earth but your heritage is not of this earth 
You are here, but you are not of it. You know, it's so funny. A few years ago, there was this article that was going around about how blue-eyed people share one common ancestor and blue eyes and green eyes are literally just like a birth defect. And I remember reading it and I was like, no, that doesn't seem right to me. That doesn't seem right to me. No, it's not a birth defect. This is the, the convoluted shit that the fourth density negative people, the Dracos, or the, the Dracos that these, these assholes serve, the psychopaths serve, want us to think that literally every single physicality, every single Shakti expression of your soul is something that's like, just kind of like, oops, like a big bang, boom, it accidentally happened. No, your heritage is one of the 12 tribes of the cosmic galaxies. I am very Nordic. Yes, my soul is Lyran. I know my soul is Lyran. And I've also got a lot of Palladian and I also have a lot of Kentuckian in me. Now, the strongest of this galactic heritage is the Lyran. And why is that? That's because of the they, they were demon slayers. Lyrans were literally demon slayers. We saw that in the Sophia Code with Magdalene. And what have I seen most of my life? Demons. So this is my soul. This is my soul's mission right? And being Lyran, I have genetically created myself to represent that tribe of Israel, right? Lyra, the color of Lyra is a golden color. When this, when I started my YouTube, it was about a year into my YouTube channel, people kept messaging me that my skin was changing colors, that I was, had a golden hue about me. And I didn't know what they were talking about until I got deep into this. And I was like, oh, Oh, even the Bible says you will know them by their flags. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about the essence of the person, the aura of the person. So why do they call Mr. T orange man bad? Because he has a golden light about him. He is also Lyran. That's what they're talking about. And so we're going to start to see different hues of colors coming off people as that activation starts to, to open up, as that vibration starts to move through their DNA. Does this make sense? I know if you're new to this, this probably sounds batshit crazy. But to me, this makes way more sense than the bullshit that they sold us in school that we just came from monkeys. So now he's going into his childhood with his father. He says, there I grew from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mystery. So his father is teaching him the ways of the cosmos, okay? Until in a time there grew within the fire of wisdom so that we see a lot of, of talk in here about the transformative fire. We see that referenced a lot in the missing books of the Bible. What is that fire of wisdom? What is that transformative fire? Well, it's the literal transmutation of knowledge, of turning, it's the guru, of turning darkness into light. Is Thoth a guru? Absolutely he is. Until it bursts into a consuming flame, not desired I, but the attainment of wisdom. Until one great day, a command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. And so when we're looking at the dweller, we see a, a little, little bit later on, we're giving a name of the dweller. And Doriel has um, a note here where he says, this word has no English equivalent. It means a state of detachment. So when we look at the studies of spirituality, we start to understand, again, the Prakriti and the Purusha, the Shiva and the Shakti. The body, even though the body is beautiful and magnificent, and it's just an expression of the soul. And even Patanjali tells us that human suffering comes from us thinking what we are is not who we are. So we're attached to our identity and our body versus what's 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 creating the body which is the soul right the soul is who you really are every expression of your body is coming through the beauty of your soul that's why we say the eyes are the windows to the soul you can look in someone's eyes and see if they're kind see see how they're feeling if they're a psychopath i mean i hear that anderson cooper's eyes are pretty dead that's just what i've heard don't know if it's true or not but i've heard people that know him there's people in Atlanta that worked with him because CNN is here who say he's got like dead eyes, you know, so you can see that within that expression, but the body, the golden hue, whatever you have in your body is simply just an expression of that soul. It's the Shakti. It's the expression. So if it's just the expression, 
then it's not the soul. And so when we start to understand that, really understand that, we become, we come into this kind of this sense of a little bit more detachment over over our own mortality. And so that's what I think they're talking about here. The dweller of the temple is the sense of this being that understands you now get it. You now get it. Through your own fire of transmutation, of shadow work, you understand that the life you're living ain't nothing but an expression of your infinite soul. Not the other way around. You're not a human being having a spiritual experience. You're a spiritual being having a human experience. Few were there among the children of men who had looked upon the mighty face and lived. For not as the sons of men are the children of light, for they are not incarnate in physical body. So that the, the children of light are the spirits, the souls right? Of the consciousness. Yeah, they're not in physical body. They're just pure consciousness. Okay. Chosen was I from the sons of men taught by the dweller so that his purpose might be fulfilled. Purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. And so at this point, Thoth is being picked by this bigger sentient being because Thoth got it. He understood it. And so he is going to use Thoth for a plan that has not even come to pass yet. That plan is us. This is why the controller controllers are batshit afraid of all of us. Because this was written, all this monumentous work was written for us. So as Thoth is saying, his, he's saying a plan, a purpose that it yet unborn in the womb of time. So Thoth understands that there's going to come a time that is yet, it's not here yet. And thought that's going to be used for this purpose that is, at this point, isn't even conceivable in the realm of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I approached the light emitted from the great fire. Taught me, he, the path to Amente, the underworld where the great king sits upon the throat of might. Deep I bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. And so through his own mutation into the underworld, through his own fire of, of, of shit and, and breaking those attachments, he was gifted the key of life, meaning he transcended death. Free was I of the halls of Amente, but not bound by death to the circle of life. For to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then having drunk deep the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men, and there I found the great mystery and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be still and the flame be quenched. So Doriel has a note here. Standing before the lords of life and the death, he received the key of life and death with power to take it up or lay it down at will. So yes, again, as I said, as we now know, Thoth transcended death, meaning that he is not a slave to death. Rather, he decides when he comes and when he goes. And when he wants to leave, he just goes into the halls of Amente and lays his body under the flower of life for rejuvenation. And then his consciousness then is able to embody other bodies while his Thoth body still lays in rejuvenation. Okay? Drawn through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste the cup of death and return again in the light of life. So now again, we have another reference to reincarnation. Gradually from the kings of, Amit of Atlantis, waves, past waves of consciousness that have been with me only to replace by the spawn of a lower star. So we know that he had that, that Thoth is telling us, like, I am going to come and go, and come and go in multiple different incarnations. We know that Hermes was Thoth. We know it's possible that Yahshua, or Yahshua's teacher, was also Thoth. I've since learned that Odin, the Viking god Odin, Odin is also Thoth. In every incarnation, he's bringing back that conscious information of Atlantis, right? It all goes, y'all, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it all goes back to Atlantis. This all fucking goes back to Atlantis. That's why the Magdalene bloodline is so important. Again, the Merovingians, O negative bloodline. My bloodline is Atlantean. That's why they wanted to get rid of Magdalene. It's not about her necessarily. It's about the passing on of the Atlantean bloodline. 
In obedience to the law, the word of the master grew into flower, downward into darkness, turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans, until at last in his wrath arose Aguante, the dweller. So this, is, again, is the state of detachment. Speaking the word, calling the power deep in the earth's heart, the sons of Amente heard, and hearing, directed the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting, using the lagos, until the great fire changed its direction over the world then broke the great water so now we're getting into the collapse of atlantis okay so over the world then broke the great waters drowning and seeking changing earth's balance until only the temple of light was left standing on the great mountain of undal still rising out of the water so, some there were who were living saved from the rush of the fountain so basically there were some who so basically he's saying here that there were people who survived the flood. They went to high ground. Okay. Call to me the master saying, gather ye together my people. Take them by the arts ye have learned from far across the waters until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians dwelling in the caves of the desert. Follow them there a plan ye know. And so we know from last week that when Atlantis fell, the group that was with Thoth knew what was going on. But after Atlantis fell, because these tablets were written a couple of generations after the fall, everyone who survived forgot. They went through amnesia. They forgot what, what they were or where they came from. And so they went back into living in caves. They went from having this like George Jetson sophisticated life to now living in caves again. And so the master, God, source, creator is saying, okay, Thoth, now go down from the mountain and start to talk to these hairy barbarians. They're being called barbarians now to start this chain in motion, to get them to remember where they come from. Gathered I then my people and entered the great ship of the master. Upward we rose into the morning. Dark beneath the earth lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters, vanished from the earth until time appointed was the great temple. And so as they're leaving their temple where they were located, it now disappears. Because it can't come back again until our generation. Fast we fled towards the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of Kem. Raging, they came with cudgels and spears, lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utter utterly destroy. Now, it's interesting because Billy Carson talks about cargo. Um, I think he called it, what did he call it? Cargo cartels. There's a really, really great talk with Billy Carson where he talks about how a lot of these religions, including Christianity, are coming from off-worlders. And so it's almost like, so we have these these. Thoth and his, like, homies, his gang, his entourage, are now coming down. And these people are living very barbaric lives. They don't remember where they come from. And so Thoth has all this equipment, all this knowledge. And so at first, they're afraid of Thoth. Okay? But then what happens over time is they start to see Thoth as a deity. Now, Thoth, does ne he never calls himself a god. He says, I, I am just a son of Atlantis. I'm just someone who is like you happens to remember what happened but that's where we start to see these temples arise and we see this in a lot of religions i mean again billy carson check out that check out his origins of religion talk because he talks all about this about how uh, throughout history that's why we call the the greek gods gods is because our ancestors didn't understand that they weren't gods they were just off-worlders who were more advanced than we were and the only way we could explain them in our lack of knowledge was a god or a goddess when they're not actually gods or goddesses, they're just literally extraterrestrial humanoid beings that just had more advanced technology. And so we're seeing this. We're seeing these, these leftover people get freaked out because all of a sudden these people that are far superior as they're perceived are coming down. And now we're, then we're going to see them start to worship thought. Then I raised my staff and I directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of the stone of the mountain. Then I spoke to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying, we are children of the sun and its messengers. Telling them about Atlantis. Hey, yo, remember Atlantis? Remember where you come from? We're bringing you the information of who you are? Proud I them by my display of magic science until at my feet they groveled when I released them. So now they start to worship him, even though he's like, yo, 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 
listen, bro, you're, you're, you're one of me. Like you don't remember, but like, yo, there was a big flood and, um, you're one of us. I, I need you to remember this. But we know, and Thoth knows, that we're not going to remember that we're Atlanteans until our generation now. Long I dwelt we in the land of Kem, long and yet long again, until obeying the commands of the Master, who while sleeping yet lives eternally, I sent for the sons of Atlantis, sent them in, in many directions. From the womb of time, wisdom might rise again in her children. So this is interesting. This might explain why we have so many different Isis temples, so many different pyramids all over the world because of this this again. So let me read this again. Long dwelt we in the land of Kim, long and yet long again, until obeying the commands of the master, who while sleeping yet lives eternally. So when I see this, until obeying the commands of the master, who while sleeping yet lives eternally, I think he's telling us that he's talking about source source creator God, that he's sleeping now. So we know at this point, there has to be a tug of war between Lucifer, but yet, so he's sleeping, the master God is backing away to allow the polarity to continue for us to discover who we are, but yet he's still kind of watching and he's still kind of here. And he's telling Thoth, hey, listen, my son of Atlantis, I need for you to send your people who still have memory of who they are i need you to like dispense them around the world so they can start kind of talking to these cultures about atlantis to hopefully start this dna memory through the generations to come and so again that's why i think we see it here why we have so many pyramids all over the world is because god told thoth send the people out your people out so that the world will have this information. So let's read this again. Long dwelt we in the land of Kem, long and yet long again, until obeying the commands of the master, who while sleeping yet lives eternally, I sent for me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time, wisdom might rise again in her children. Long dwelt I in the land of Kem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of Kem, Watered by the rains of my wisdom, blasted I then a path to Amente, so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age, a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom, preserving the record. So now he's like, you know what? This is when I, when I sent all of my, my uh, bros out there to like remind you guys to start that cycle of keeping records. That's why there are golden tablets found in Latin America as well. Um, he's like, all right, so... We're keeping with the plan here. I was from Atlantis. My daddy in Atlantis was like Zeus. So I'm like half Anunnaki. All these other people are also half Anunnaki, but they just don't remember who they are. But yet my homies, we remember because we were kind of kept away. And now we've been given this responsibility because... I don't have to die. I can kind of hang out for all these generations. I've now been given this responsibility by source creator to slowly start to nudge these other people away by setting these teachings all over the world. And as he's doing this, he keeps talking about, again, let's go back to the beginning, the first line. I thought the Atlantean, master of mysteries, keeper of records, mighty king and magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into halls of Amente, set down for guidance for those who are to come after us. Those records of mighty great Atlantis. And so he knows, Thoth knows that this is going to take a while. Like that, it's not just going to be like a crash course in Atlantean sciences and wisdom. Like we got to go all over the world and like chisel these things out and hide them under pyramids because it's going to be a lot of reincarnating generations. We're going to watch people live and die, live and die, live and die. And every generation, they're going to figure it out more and more and more and more and more until one day our generation goes, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know that Atlantis they talk about in school being fictitious? I actually, it's not fictitious. Oh, yeah. I'm Atlantean. You're Atlantean. Whoa. Like, that's what Thoth knew was going to happen. He knew we were going to go through the veil of ignorance, that we're going to go through the veil of amnesia. We're going to fall hook, line, and sinker into this idea that we came from monkeys, and then we're going to be like, wow, that was a really stupid, stupid theory we fell for. And then we're going to go, oh, look, here are these tablets. This makes sense. This makes sense. 
And can we just talk about how much patience Thoth had? I mean, we've been riding this Great Awakening roller coaster for a few years now, and I know we're impatient. Thoth has had to ride this for generations and be like, come on, you guys, come on, you guys, come on. remember, 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 remember. All right. Great grew the sons of Kem, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upwards into soul force. Now for a time, I go from among them into the dark halls of Amente, deep into the halls of the earth, before the lords of power, face to face again with the dweller. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amente. Few there would be the courage to dare it. Few pass the portal into dark Amente. Raise over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes the, or the earth's force. And Doriel has a note here that he's talking about gravity, which I don't know because we don't even know if gra gravity is even real or not. <laughs> what is real anymore? Deep and yet deeper I place a force house or chamber. From it I carved a circular passage like a labyrinth. Um, uh, reaching amongst the great summit, there in the apex, I say, I see, set I the crystal, sending the ray into time space, drawing the force from out to the other, concentrating upon the gateway to Amente. So he's creating the great pyramid over protecting the halls of Amente, not from us, but from the controllers. Other chambers I've built and left vacant, vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within there are the keys of Amente. So he's hiding some of this stuff in plain sight. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by long fasting. Lie the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber, then reveal I to him the great mysteries. So whoever is brave enough to do the work is what he's saying. He who has courage would dare the dark realms. Let it be purified first by long fasting. So those of you doing your work, you have the courage. That's again the story of Hanuman and Ravana, the courage to do this. Then I will reveal to him the great mystery. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him. Even in the darkness shall I meet him. I thought, Lord of wisdom, meet him and hold him and dwell within him always. Build I the great pyramids, pattern after the pyramid of earth force, but eternally so that it too might remain through the ages. In it built I the knowledge of magic science, so that it might be here. When again I return from Amente, I, while I sleep in the halls of Amente, my soul roaming free, will incarnate and dwell among men in one form or another. So he's saying, I go down, but my soul's going to come back again with Hermes, with uh, possibly Yahshua, or Yahshua's teacher, with um, Odin. Which is crazy because, a, like a few months ago, I've never really been interested in like Viking um, folklore or mythology. And even though I am Nordic and Odin is a Nordic incarnation of Thoth, I had no idea that Odin was Thoth. And Odin has been coming to me lately. I mean, even I even went and bought a little Odin to put on my bedside table because Odin started to come in really strong for me. Um, and then when I realized that he was Thoth and that I had been in my regressions, I think I told you guys last week in my regressions, I had seen for years now, I'd seen this like huge emerald on my chest. And I knew even though the heart chakra is green, I knew that's not what that was. That's not what that was. I just knew instinctively that that green emerald had something to do with the emerald tablets. It was a metaphor. And in that point of regression, I knew that there were things called the Emerald Tablets, but I didn't know anything about them. And I kept being nudged to look at the Emerald Tablets, look at the Emerald Tablets, and I just never did. I've had books on them for a while, and I just got distracted, just never did. And then Odin came in strong a couple of months ago. Odin came in strong a couple of months ago when the uh, attacks got really bad. Like Odin started to come in real strong and really, really work with me and really started to kind of be there and presently be there, almost like a father figure. And then I started to go into the decided to finally go into the Emerald Tablets and I find out that Thoth is Odin. And so it's all coming together now. All my time in India that I spent going through the dark realms of my own soul. And so I want to tell you guys, this shit is real. This is real. This is more real than anything else in our world. It's realer than anything. This is real. Okay? And I know in studying the Emerald Tablets and listening to other people's perception of the Emerald Tablets, it is... 
mind boggling how many people out there have, have, have had the same experience as I have with Thoth coming to them or Odin coming to them or Hermes, whatever incarnation of Thoth needs to come to them to get their attention. He comes in that incarnation to you to get you to wake up. I know I'm Atlantean. I know you're Atlantean. I know that the controllers fear us. I know there's more power in us than we even realize for ourselves. And this is what this is telling you. Okay. Thank you. Thoth for being so patient with us. Thank you. All right. He says, emissary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his command so man might be lifted. Now I return to the halls of Amente, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller. Lift ever upward your eyes towards the light. Surely in time ye are one with the master. So ye are one with God. Ye are one with the source. That samadhi in the yoga sutras. Let me read that again. Lift ever upwards your eyes towards the light towards the light surely in time ye are one with the master surely by right ye are one with the master surely by right ye are one with all that gets into a bigger spiritual theory that we are all one soul and we decided to split off into multiple incarnations so that we could experience the lessons of being separate the polarity of being collectively one and then separate okay so he's saying let's read this again lift ever upward your eyes towards the light surely in time ye are one with the master surely by right ye are one with the master surely by right ye are one with all now i depart from ye know my commandments keep them and be them and i will be with you helping and guiding you into the light now before me opens the portal I go down into the darkness of night. And that's where the first tablet ends. Next week, we will go into the second tablet. Once again, you guys, I really suggest that you guys get your own copy of the golden, uh, emerald, sorry, emerald tablets. Um, but if you hang on, I am going to read through it without any interruption to close out this, this uh, episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your experiences. Have you worked with Thoth before or Odin or Hermes or any of these other incarnations of Thoth? Um, what do you think about the Emerald Tablets? Anyway, enjoy. The Emerald Tablet 1, The History of Thoth the Atlantean. I, Thoth the Atlantean, Master of Mysteries, Keeper of Records, Mighty King, Magician, living from generation to generation, being about to pass into the halls of Amente, set down for the guidance for those that are to come after. These records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. In the great city of Kior, on the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation. Not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amente, where the river of life flows eternally onward. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into the light, and as many times I have ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Kem shall know me no more. But in a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Then beware, O men of Kem, if ye have falsely betrayed my teachings, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into the darkness of caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secret to the men of the north or the men of the south, lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely I will return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great 
beyond the conception of the little people now around me. Knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity, knowledge that belonged to the earth's youth. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with power, drawn from the eternal flame, and of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, thought me, keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light, who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands, mouthpiece after the three of the dweller of Unal, speaker to the kings with the voice that must be obeyed. Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom, until it burst into a consuming flame. Not desired I, but the attainment of wisdom, until on a great day the command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon that mighty face and lived. For not as the sons of men are the children of light, when they are not incarnated in a physical body. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller, so that his purposes might be fulfilled, purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I too approached the light emitted from the great fire, taught be he the path to Amente the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might deep i bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death receiving as my gift the key of life free was i from the halls of amente bound not by death to the circle of life for to the stars i journeyed until space and time became as naught then having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom i looked into the hearts of men and there i found great mysteries and was glad for only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled and the flame within be quenched. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Gradually from the kingdoms of Atlantis passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be replaced by the spawn of a lower star. In obedience to the law, the word of the master grew into flower, downward into darkness turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans until at last in his wrath arose from him his Aguanti, the dweller. Speaking the word, calling the power deep in the earth's heart, the sons of Amente heard and hearing, directing the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting using the logos until that great fire changed its direction. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing earth's balance until only the temple of light was left standing on the great mountain of Undal, still rising out of the water. Some there were who were living saved from the rush of the fountains called me to them the master saying gather ye together my people take them by the arts ye have learned of far across the waters until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians dwelling in the caves of the desert follow there the plan that ye know of gathered i then my people and entered the great ship of the master upward we rose into the morning dark beneath us lay the temple suddenly over it rose the water vanished from the earth until the time appointed was the great temple fast we fled towards the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of chem raging they came with cudgels and spears lifted in anger seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of atlantis then i raised my staff and directed a ray of vibration striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain and then i spoke to them in words calm and peaceful telling them of the might of atlantis saying we were children of the sun and its messengers cowed i then by my display of magic science until at my feet they groveled when i released them long dwelt we in the land of chem long and yet long again until obeying the commands of the master who while sleeping yet lives eternally i sent for me the sons of atlantis sent them in many directions that from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children 
Long time I dwelt in the land of Kem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of Kem, watered by the rains of my wisdom. Blasted I then a path to Amente, so that I might retain my powers, living from the age to age a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom, preserving the records. Great grew the sons of Kem, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upward in soul force. Now for a time I go from among them into the dark halls of Amente, deep in the halls of the earth, before the lords of power, face to face once again with the dweller. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway, leading down to Amente. Few there would be with courage to dare it, few past the portal to dark Amente. Raised over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcame the earth's force. Deep and yet deeper, I placed a forced house of chamber. From it carved, I, a circular passage, reaching almost to the great summit. There in the apex, I set the crystal, sending the ray into the time-space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amente. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the keys to Amente. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by long fasting, lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber, then reveal I to him the great mysteries. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him, even in the darkness of the earth shall I meet him, I thought, Lord of Wisdom. Meet him and hold him and dwell with him always. Build I the great pyramid, pattern after pyramid of earth force, burning eternally, so that it too might remain through the ages. In it I built my knowledge of magic science, so that it might be here. When I again return from Amente, I, while I sleep in the halls of Amente, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another. A missionary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his command so man might be lifted. Now I return to the halls of Amente, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller. Lift ever upwards your eyes towards the light. Surely in time ye are one with the master. Surely by right ye are one with the master. Surely by right ye are one with all. Now I depart from ye. Know my commandments, keep them, and be them, and I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. Now before me opens the portal, go I down in the darkness of night.